In a recent interview, Gary Player, the nine-time major championship winner and one of the greatest golfers ever to play the game, gave his view on modern golf balls and how far they go. No one golf ball goes further than the other. I've tried them all, he was quoted as saying. But if you read through all the marketing material from golf ball makers and sometimes see claims that this or that ball is the longest golf ball in the world, you'd be forgiven for getting a bit confused. Given the importance of distance in the modern game, as evidenced by all the stats, choosing a golf ball which gives you maximum distance clearly makes sense. But the process to make that choice can seem overwhelming to many golfers these days. There are over 1,200 golf balls available to choose from, according to the latest list of conforming golf balls issued by the USGA and RNA. So while choice is, of course, a great thing with so many options available, it is easy to see why many golfers get confused. So in this video, we take a detailed look at the main types of golf balls available and gather the stats and analysis to see whether different brands of golf balls, whatever their cost, really do make a difference when it comes to distance. The golf ball is the only piece of equipment which every golfer of whatever standard use for every single shot they play. Distance, meanwhile, has now been proven by the stats to have a direct link to scoring and therefore handicap. Presenting his analysis of millions of golf shots in his fantastic book, Every Shot Counts, Columbia Business School professor and the godfather of modern golf stats, Mark Brody, showed how extra driving distance has a very positive impact on every level of golfer and the most impact on the highest scoring players. So given how important distance and the golf ball are, it obviously makes sense for all golfers to be clear on whether different golf balls really make a difference when it comes to how far they go. Testing golf balls in a controlled way to give credible results, which make clear the distance difference between one ball and another, is not as straightforward as it may seem, however. If, for example, you simply got a player to test a bunch of different golf balls themselves by hitting a few shots, it would not be obvious whether any distance differences that resulted were the result of the player hitting one shot better than the other, or the ball. In the modern game, therefore, robots are used to compare golf balls to ensure consistent and reliable data, as these machines are able to hit the same spot on a club face with minute precision every single time. And a year or so back, today's golfer used one of these $250,000 robots to test 21 golf balls during a week-long test at PXG's million square feet practice range in Arizona. Not only that, but to make the driver distance test most relevant to different standards of golfer, they tested each of these balls by programming the robot to hit 12 shots with each club head speed of 85, 100 and 115 miles an hour. To put that into perspective, the average driver swing speed in the PGA Tour is 114 miles an hour, while the average male golfer averages a driver swing speed of approximately 90 to 93 miles an hour, which is just below the 94 mile an hour average swing speed on the LPGA Tour. Women, senior and junior golfers, meanwhile, typically record driver swing speeds of between 60 and 80 miles an hour. And what today's golfer found was that golf balls do indeed matter for distance, but that the extent of that difference varies depending on the club head speed of the individual player. A golfer with a PGA Tour level driver swing speed of 115 miles an hour can realise just over 10 yards of extra distance, depending on what ball they use, and at slower swing speeds of 110 and 85 miles an hour, there were still gains of 7 and 4.5 yards respectively to be found when using different balls. While the majority of amateur golfers most likely have swing speeds with their driver which are towards the lower end of the three different swing speeds tested by today's golfer, any extra distance that anyone can potentially gain through a simple change of ball should at least be investigated. Saying that, however, it is important to bear in mind that as your driver's swing speed dips below 85 miles an hour, and especially below 80, the distance gain you can realise through using a different ball is likely going to be minimal, if not negligible. Comparable testing by my golf spy, who themselves analysed the performance of 37 different balls across driver swing speeds of 105 miles an hour and above, 95 to 105 miles an hour, and below 95 miles an hour, again showed bigger distance differences between balls when hit at high swing speeds, but once more, that distance gains are much harder to realise at slow driver swing speeds. Also, results are clearly going to be dependent on the individual golfer, as each player's swing is of course different. How much a golf ball can make a difference in distance terms does depend on the individual player, 
But the point to take away from all of this is that it is possible to gain yardage by making sure you're playing the right ball for you and a potential 10 yard gain for higher swing speed players is a big deal. Any distance gain you can make has the statistically proven potential to improve your scoring and if that can be done by simply doing a bit of investigation of different golf balls that would seem to be something worth exploring. To help with this and assist you with any work you may want to put into finding which golf balls are the best for distance for your own game you can check out a sortable summary table of the distance results of today's golfers 21 golf ball test by going to the link in the screen which we also put in the description below and hopefully you may be able to find a nice added distance bonus achieved simply by trying out a different ball to the one you're playing now when it comes to choosing the best golf ball for your game and working out as part of that whether any go further than the others the key and often only factor for many golfers is price it doesn't take long when looking at golf balls to find that some brands are consistently more expensive than others and even within the group of balls produced by the same company different models of ball cost more than others all of this inevitably gets golfers thinking about whether expensive golf balls are better and crucially for regular players can add some much needed distance as a general rule more expensive golf balls typically go a few yards further on average especially for higher swing speed players Expensive balls are more stringently produced, leading to more consistent distance performance, but as a golfer's swing speed reduces below 80 miles an hour, distance gains are often negligible. Things don't stop there though, and before making any final decision on whether an expensive golf ball means good for your game, both from a distance point of view and overall, it is vital that all players are clear on what is the difference between an expensive and a cheaper golf ball. And in short, the difference between them is the cover. Prior to the modern golf ball bursting onto the scene in the early 2000s, golfers needed to use a soft balata ball to get some control with their iron and short game shots. But by using such a soft golf ball though, those players had to sacrifice distance off the tee. However, with the introduction of the solid resistance rubber core and multi-layer ball at the turn of the century, players were then able to enjoy the best of both worlds. Firstly, a good golf ball speed off the driver with low spin, which gives you distance thanks to the solid core. But also secondly, lots of spin with shorter irons and wedges thanks to the use of the outer layer surrounding that core during longer interaction of the club face at slower short shot swing speeds. So translating that to golf ball design today, expensive golf balls mean multi-layered three, four or five piece solid core balls with a urethane cover while cheaper golf balls typically equate to two-piece ones with a non-urethane cover, which is a, most often Serlin. And that is simply because it costs much more for the manufacturers to try and figure out how a differing mix of layers and a core can provide the perfect balance of distance and control at very different swing speeds. The best of both worlds, distance and spin option is never cheap. And in today's world of complex golf ball design, the big manufacturers, of course, want to recoup and make a profit from the extensive research and development teams they now all have trying to make and prove each new design is better than the last. And a key part of the benefit of those very costly manufacturing processes is not just potentially a few yards of distance, but also the inconsistencies which can more often be found in cheaper golf balls. Golf balls are obviously made in batches of thousands and thousands, and less robust manufacturing processes which deliver cheaper golf balls are typically more likely to produce balls which are not as consistently of the same quality throughout the batch. Inconsistencies in the golf ball can reveal itself in a variety of ways and can be as straightforward as a shot that goes a few extra yards offline. But in more extreme cases, it can be the difference between hitting the middle of the fairway or ending up out of bounds. The defects found across a bunch of very cheap golf balls can mean you might as well be consistently adjusting the loft and lie angles of your clubs each time you head out onto the course. That is not to say that the expensive brands never produce any golf balls with inconsistencies. They definitely do, and robot testing has found them from all brands. It's just that they are a lot less common. Saying all that, however, does not mean for a second that expensive is always better for every player. One of the great things about the modern golf ball market is there are loads of options designed for all standards and swing speed of player and at almost every price point. As today's golfer and my golf spies extensive tests have shown there are some cheaper balls in there 
which perform almost as well as their tour equivalents from a distance perspective at varying swing speeds. Where you really get your money from tour grade and typically more expensive golf balls, however, is not so much with distance, but with your short game. The urethane covers of tour golf balls mean you can get low spin off the tee and more spin around the greens, which Serlin or other non-urethane cover golf balls simply can't deliver that combination as well, no matter what the golf ball manufacturers may be trying to tell you with their marketing. Golf ball choice today can seem overwhelming to a lot of golfers and it's easy to see why. There are literally over a thousand options to choose from. It's important to remember though that while distance is vital in modern golf and a few extra yards through choosing a different golf ball is not something to be easily dismissed, it is not the only factor to consider when making your final choice. Choosing the right golf ball does not just mean asking yourself whether you want to gain distance off the tee or even with your irons, but also whether you want to gain around the greens, and you should always choose your golf ball from the green backwards. In other words, see how it first feels and sounds off the putter, then when chipping and pitching with your irons and finally with your driver. And if you're just starting out or haven't yet developed a repeatable swing or short game, just buy the cheapest low compression or soft feel golf ball you can. Only think about upgrading to something more expensive with a urethane cover once your game improves. Whatever standard of player you are, however, just don't keep chopping and changing your ball from one round to the next. If you're doing that, it won't matter whether the golf balls are expensive or cheap, as it is that strategy rather than the golf ball which will be hurting your scores the most. Using a ball that's well suited to your game is important, but even more important is consistency. Thanks again for watching. Please check out our other great videos in Golfing Focus. And most importantly as ever, enjoy your golf.